Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue Connive deck featuring three copies of Clever Conductor as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 3-1 a legendary human rogue that we can still cast in a mono blue deck thanks to the hybrid mana cost, and when it enters the battlefield it connives, meaning we draw a card and then discard a card. If we discarded a non-land card we can put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then whenever we discard one or more cards, can be with connive, can be with a totally different card or ability, then we exile those cards from our graveyard, and when the Clever Conductor dies, we put all those exiled cards back into our hand, so that can provide quite a bit of card advantage if we discarded some cards along the way. And then we also have four copies of Ledger Shredder, a 1-3 flyer, saying whenever a player casts their second spell each turn, Ledger Shredder connives, so that also applies to the opponent's turn, and this card is already widely adopted in a ton of other formats, so has shown that it's quite powerful. And then of course perfect in a deck that wants to discard a bunch of cards with Clever Conductor, and in general has a low curve, so we can cast two spells in the same turn pretty easily to enable a Ledger Shredder. Then we also have the four copies of Suspicious Stowaway, which can draw and discard when it hits the opponent as an unblockable 1-1, one -one, so perfect alongside Clever Conductor. And then we're also pretty good at switching it back to night time, as we have a ton of instant speed plays that we can keep up during the opponent's turn, so we can simply pass the turn, let it switch to night, and get our Seafaring Werewolf connecting to draw extra cards without having to discard at all. And then also the card draw, very synergistic with our Fairy Vandal as well, which is a flash creature that also plays well with our Suspicious Stowaway, and then can start growing as we draw our second card each turn, as it gets a plus one plus one counter, so it can also potentially enable this both in our turn and the opponent's turn. And then at one mana, Ascendant Spirit is our final creature, the main reason we're playing 20 Snowlands in our mana base, otherwise we could easily play some of the dual-faced cards like Jory Disruption or Seagate Restoration as lands that we can also discard to connive to still get a plus one plus one counter, but Spirit wants Snowlands, and also very good in this deck as we can pass a turn with a bunch of mana up and potentially level up Ascendant Spirit or otherwise play some of our other instants. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we've got some interaction with four copies of Fading Hope as our bounce spell of choice, two copies of Witness Protection can also potentially deal with a creature that's already in play, turning it into a 1-1 citizen and losing all its abilities. We've got a few counter spells as well, with two copies of Spell Pierce to counter non-creature spells. We've got two copies of Make Disappear, which also has Casualty, so we can sacrifice a creature to copy it, so the opponent has to pay four instead of two. Can also be synergistic with our Clever Conductor if we just want to sacrifice Outlet, so we can get all those exiled cards back. The Make Disappear is a way to do it. And then two copies of Disdainful Stroke to counter more expensive spells. And then we also have four copies of Slip Out the Back for protection, phasing out our creature, so it can also dodge sweepers, unlike a hexproof comma trick would, and also putting a plus one counter on it. And by phasing out, we still get to keep all the counters on our Ledger Shredder and Fairy Vandal, for instance. And then we also have four copies of Consider as a cheap cantrip, perfect for potentially double spelling with a Ledger Shredder in play, or helping us grow Fairy Vandal before attacking, so we usually want to hang on to Consider until turn 3 so we can maybe double spell alongside a 2-drop. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, 20 Snowlands and one Soaring City, which is also quite synergistic with our Clever Conductor, and so are all the channel cards as we discard them as part of the cost, so that also ends up getting exiled with Clever Conductor so we can pick it back up, so any channel cards we can fit into the deck will also synergize quite nicely with our Legend. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got our turn to Vandal or Stowaway. Stowaway combining nicely with Clever Conductor. And I'll hang on to Consider since that's a way of growing Fairy Vandal as well. Although between Stowaway and Conductor we have a lot of card draw. Opponent on a white deck. They better have a turn to play here. Otherwise our stowaway will already transform. Thalia is a good one, but we can still play Conductor at least. And then... Could make an argument for discarding Make Disappear, which is not great in the face of Thalia, although we can still cast it for 3 mana. I guess Consider is just kind of clunky at 2 mana, so we'll get rid of that. Attack. And then... Maybe get rid of a land now. And then next turn the plan will be to pass 
with uh, Counterspell and Vandal available. Opponent does get to Exile Conductor, which sadly does not give us our cards back. Opponent going for Stowaway instead. Okay. In that case, I could Ledger Shredder plus Fairy Vandal. Or we can play it real safe and keep up our instance, but then it's going to switch to Knight. So I think we just Shredder. And then if I want to trigger Ledger Shredder now, I would play Fairy Vandal. Or I could keep up Slip Out the Bank in case of another Brutal Cathar. Yeah, I guess the two cards in our hand are still reasonable. So I'll pass. And yep, there's another Brutal Cathar. So we can save our Luncher Shredder at least. Different sequence would have been to just pass with Make Disappear and Fairy Vandal instead of playing Luncher Shredder. Which also could have worked out here. Because now we're under a bit of pressure to play something main phase, so Brutal Cathar doesn't transform back. But I guess this works. Ledger Shredder plus Vandal. And then Conductor gets to exile a few cards. Probably get rid of Vandal, keep Make Disappear. And uh, discard lands. Hit for two. So we've got a pair of 2-4 Luncher Shredders, Fairy Vandal can keep on growing as well. But can never feel too safe against Mono White. Spellbinder, this can make our counterspell even more expensive. Would have been a way to potentially sacrifice our Conductor to get our cards back as well. Well, I can play my land now. And... Uh, yeah, I guess we'll start attacking at least one Shredder attacks, plus maybe Fairy Vandal to trade for Spellbinder. Keep the other Shredder back on defense. Opponent accepts a trade for Vandal, since they know they're going to be taking quite a beating in the air. But it does switch back to Knight. So if our opponent can double spell, they would transform those creatures back, make disappear. I would have to sacrifice a creature in order to counter this one. And if I let it resolve, they can pay the two to pump the team, which would make the brutes into four fours, which is probably too hard for me to beat. So I think we counter and then sacrifice conductor to casualty. Now our opponent can still, of course, play another spell to switch it back to day, transform both Brutal Cathars, but then we also get to loot with Luncher Shredder. So that's kind of the saving grace. And yeah, Aspirants. So we're gonna lose both Shredders. Should probably hang on to my spells. And then at least Fading Hope can uh, bounce one of the Brutal Cathars to get our creatures back. So it's going to be an interesting game. I could try double spelling here to trigger Ledger Shredder on the way out, or I guess just bounce the Brutal Cathar that has a stowaway underneath. Uh, that might be worth it. I could Fairy Vandal. And then Fading Hope. Bounce. Okay, so let's see here. Don't think it really matters since I'm probably discarding Stroke either way. And another Fading Hope's nice. Do I still need Stowaway? Don't think so. So get Stowaway back, Ascendant Spirits on top. That's not actually a bad draw. One Shredder gets exiled, the other one stays. And I can attack for three. And probably fine to play Ascendant Spirits. So 
So a lot happened there. Opponent can replay Brutal Cathar. Get rid of our Luncher Shredder, presumably. And set up some attacks, maybe with Thalia as well. But we're back on the board at least. Just an attack for three. Take it. Slip out the back's nice. So we could Fading Hope one of the Brutal Cathars. Could let it switch to Knights, but then that also happens to their werewolves. A lot of options. Could also bounce Thalia, so we make our author spells cheaper. If I bounce the 3-3 three Cathar, three then I do set up maybe an attack with Ascendant Spirit as well. So that's nice. And then we can slip out the back if they replay Brutal Cathar. So I think that's still reasonable. And then don't need land. So attack with all. Opponent takes it, in which case I don't level up for Sun and Spirits. Draw with Stowaway, which grows Fairy Vandal. This Daneful Stroke can go. Unless her opponent's playing Wandering Emperor, but at this point I doubt it. And then pass. We can always level up Ascendant Spirit if we don't need to slip out the back. Okay, Brutal Cathar probably goes for Fairy Vandal now. So that's protected, and then next turn I could level up Ascendant Spirit twice. Another Aspirant triggers Ledger Shredder. Can discard Consider, sure. Got a good blocker now. So yeah, this was a lot of back and forth, a lot of bouncing of Brutal Cathar, but I think we managed to find a way out. Level up Ascendant Spirits. Level up again. And that should be enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. A little bit creature light, so we'll have to protect our Ascendant Spirit, but we've got a spell pierce to do so. Opponents turn one mountain. Not what we wanted to see. And Voltage Surge deals with our spirit right away. Good thing we drew another creature here. So Voltage Surge points towards artifacts, black, red, and yeah, lets it switch to nighttime, so we get to draw. And Infernal Grasp was probably better off played in their turn. As we now get to Spell Pierce and connect for two. Pass it back. Make that Grixis. Fable. I can maybe consider to see if we find a Spell Pierce. If not, I can Fading Hope. Not to consider. It doesn't seem necessary. So I can Fading Hope now. It's probably fine, because if I do it in my turn alongside Ledger Shredder, it would switch back to daytime. Even though we would get to connive with Ledger Shredder. So there is a little bit of tension with keeping it nighttime and wanting to double spell with Shredder. Alright, we're starting to run a little bit low on action. The good news is, if our opponent wants it to switch back to daytime, they'll be double spelling and then they will be playing into our Luncher Shredder. So, in that way, having both in play is not too bad. Iteration to go digging. Finds a land. And they could still play a 2 mana spell here, but our opponent passes. Slip out the backs, perfect. Some nice protection. As we keep drawing, and can play another werewolf. F 
Fable finally transforms. Can always put uh, Reflection under Witness Protection so it doesn't get to activate. Another iteration. So your opponent's gonna need something like a Sweeper to catch back up. And hopefully we can find a Counterspell for it in the meantime. Harvester might enable Lancer Shredder for us. But that would switch it back to Daytime. So then finding a Clever Conductor to combine with our double stowaway would be nice. Or we can just pass to switch it back to Night. Reflection plus Harvester is a deadly combo, so definitely need to witness protection. And then we can flash in a Fairy Vandal here. That seems fine. So Flash and Vandal switches back to Day. Still get to attack for a little bit. And see what else we draw. Might not need both copies of Slip out the back. So definitely discard one here. Vandal grows. And Ascendant Spirit seems good too. So let us. Witness Protection Reflection, play Sun and Spirits, and pass it back. Ledger Shredder triggers, probably gonna hang on to slip out the back. Fading Hope is tempting too, but I think I'm more likely to want to protect my own creature, especially if there is a Sweeper and uh, our opponent would kill everything else. So, legitimate business person now. A green-white citizen. Harvester can still take out one of the low toughness creatures here. And yeah, opponent attacks for four, so it could imply that a sweeper's incoming. We'll just take it. Voltage Surge, gonna take out Fairy Vandal, that's acceptable. Not gonna slip out the bank just yet. Corpse Appraiser triggers Ledger Shredder. And sure, we'll get rid of a Fading Hope. And then we can level up Ascendant Spirits. And we can level it up again in our turn. And this would be a lethal attack. And we got there, so beating the Grixis Vampires deck on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable, but could definitely use some help. Some more one mana plays to help put counters on Ledger Shredder. Some interaction would be helpful. Opponent mono green so far. And I'll play a Ledger Shredder here. Next turn, Conductor. Plays well with it. As we can maybe discard cards and then exile them with a Conductor. Dried on three, they can sacrifice, so opponent's definitely ramping. And we'll play Conductor, maybe discard a second copy. And then... Hmm. Yeah, that seems fine. Could have also gotten rid of a land in case they maybe bounce Clever Conductor without killing it. Yeah. But then we can just replay it, so we'll still have access to at least one copy. Now our opponent unable to sacrifice Dryad. Cultivator still ramps. And then we would like to find a counter spell for their big finisher, although if that finisher is Koma, it is uncounterable. 
Now we can double spell, so I'm probably gonna go Shredder plus Vandal to get the counters flowing. And then next round we can replay Conductor. So this is the Shredder that just came into play, so less important that this one picks up a counter. Fading Hope seems useful, so maybe get rid of another Fairy Vandal. And then hit for two. Although they might have another bounce spell here. Yep. Okay. This opponent with lots of early interaction, but hopefully that means they don't have too many finishers left. Field Trip can learn for Mascot Exhibition, which they can cast next turn, although even a Spell Pierce could be enough to counter that one. And yep, there's the 7 mana Lesson. Take three. Okay. So we could go Ledger Shredder plus Clever Conductor, but then of course we won't have an answer for Mascot Exhibition. Or we can try and go Digging. Maybe I can play Ledger Shredder and then consider, and then we'll still have mana for a Counterspell afterwards and still grow most of the team. So that's worth a shot. Okay, Sun and Spirits might be a little too slow to get going. Already have quite a few flyers. So I don't think we need it here. So that can go. And the land can go as well. So would have preferred the other way around, but we didn't know we were drawing a land. Fading Hope's not actually bad when dealing with Mascot Exhibition, as we can bounce one of the tokens. But I already have one in hand. I think it's still worth keeping overall. And then... We can attack for three. And then maybe double spell on the opponent's turn to trigger Ledger Shredder. Although it would be better to get Conductor down first, so we can basically rescue all those cards that we want to uh, discard. So big turn coming up, it's gonna be a Titan of Industry. Yeah, that's quite a bit better than a Mascot Exhibition. Does have Reach as well. But we can bounce it. Opponent makes a Rhino as well. Alright, so I'm probably bouncing Titan and then question is do we also consider here? Do we bounce the Rhino token? Probably need to bounce Titan a second time. So could Fading Hope consider? But then we might end up wasting those Shredder triggers. But we're pretty likely to pick up another spell we can cast alongside Clever Conductor. Fairy Vandal. I guess I'll keep just to discard an online card to Ledger Shredder. And then I slip out the back and probably go as well here. Sure. And then now we can play Clever Conductor. Opponent has another Fading Hope. Okay, fair enough. Land can go now. Slip out the back and go. Okay, time for a Clever Conductor. And then discard another. Might have been better off actually playing the Ledger Shredder first and then Clever Conductor. Kind of want to keep Soaring City as a bounce spell. So, attack for 7. And then it's probably fine to play another Shredder here. And then Soaring City we can channel. It's gonna cost 3 mana as we control a Legendary. Putin might be forced to gain 5. Yep, and they also make a Rhino. 
Take seven. So the race is on. If I bounce both creatures, eight, eleven, twelve. Uh, let's see, this is three mana. We can also play a Sun and Spirit to trigger Ledger Shredder. So that might be good enough here. If we can find some spells to discard. Another Fading Hope on top. Soaring City. And attack 4. 14 exactly. Alright. I'm sure we could have sequenced a few things differently to get an extra draw or maybe plus one counter here and there. But yeah, Clever Conductor with 5 cards waiting to be returned to hand. Looking good. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems fine. Got our Launcher Shredder plus Conductor. And then a little bit of creature interaction, a counterspell, a protection. So a little bit of everything. Put on to red-green. Depending on the matchup, we can decide what to discard next turn to our Conductor Gala Greeter. So it looks more of a Treasure slash token deck. Yeah, we'll play Conductor. And then probably don't need the land too badly. Although getting an extra counter on Conductor would be nice. Maybe I don't need Slip out the back. Don't think the opponent's deck is going to have too much in the way of interaction. And the extra counter on Conductor maybe allows us to attack past the Gala Greeters. Another Gala Greeters. Opponent makes a treasure. And a gold hounds. At least triggers a luncher shredder. And then hmm, witness protection could be the discard. And then keep up make disappear fairy vandal next turn. Could get rid of fading hope. And then main phase of witness protection on Gala Greeters alongside Fairy Vandal. But then we're shields down on our counter spell. All the treasures are making it difficult for Make Disappear to be effective. It's kind of the main issue here. So, yeah, tough choice. Think protection can go. And our opponent makes more treasure, gains some life. Okay. So we'll move to combats. Opponent takes it, so I could double spell just to trigger Ledger Shredder. I think I need to keep up my counter. So I think we let damage happen, and then we can double spell Fairy Vandal and make disappear in the opponent's turn. Rabble Rousing. Okay, so if I make this appear, they could sacrifice Gold Hound. And then they can pay for it. Now we could play Make This Appear with Casualty by, let's say, sacking a Fairy Vandal. We run out first, or I can Fading Hope Gold Hound. Hope that they don't float mana. And then Make This Appear. I think I'm going with a Fairy Vandal line since. I don't expect my opponent to not necessarily sacrifice Gold Hound here. And then we'll hang on to Clever Conductor for a little bit longer. Even though I could have sacked it already just to get these cards back. Counter Rebel Rising. So that works out. And then we get to Connive. And at this point, probably discard land. Okay. So we now know what the opponent's intentions are. Can main phase Fairy Vandal Fading Hope. Just to connive and grow Fairy Vandal. Sure. Bouncing a Gala Greeters. Uh, 
And we get to scry and ascend a spirit to the top, so that will be a nice mana sink. Do I still keep a land in hand? I think so. Opponent might double spell in their turn and trigger Ledger Shredder. They're at 9, but they can easily gain some life back with Gala Greeters, so the game's far from over. Devilish Valley, okay, so that's their big finisher. Yeah, that could do some damage with a Rabble Rousing. So desperately need to find another Bounce spell. Even a Witness Protection here, if we can have Clever Conductor die. So your opponent may be setting up a lethal Rabble Rousing for next turn. Third Gala Greeters. Valley attacks for four, we'll have to take it. And a Spell Pierce, not gonna be enough to counter Rabble Rousing. So, yeah, not much we can do here. Besides attack and hope they block Clever Conductor. Opponent chumps, so they don't want to give us the exiled cards back. Alright, big moment of truth here. If they have another Ramble Rousing, we're potentially just dead to the valley. It's gonna be a stimulus package instead that may be enough as well, unless Spell Pierce making them pay two gets rid of an extra treasure. Yeah, that could maybe help, although double Gala Greeters plus stimulus package is still very effective. So I think they might still have enough here to make a lethal valley. They essentially get five tokens from package between the Gala Greeters, getting extra treasures. So doubling valley five times should be more than enough. All right, Ledger Shredder triggers, but we'll have to discard whatever we draw. And sadly, I drew a Fading Hope, which would have been the winning play. So... Gala Greeters triggers, make a whole bunch of treasure, turn those into tokens, and uh, I guess we'll block a Gala Greeters. I can prevent one more damage by blocking Valet with Ascendant Spirits, but they can also still gain some life with Gala Greeters, so we don't necessarily kill them on the way back. Uh, I guess this one hasn't received a plus one counter yet, so maybe I should block the other one. But yeah, our opponent should have it here. Yeah, maybe keeping an extra card in hand so we could draw into Fading Hope if our opponent double spelled. Could have uh, saved the day. But then again, our opponent still has the Stimulus Package triple Gala Greeters engine going, which is going to be hard to beat. And. Uh, I was also kind of expecting them to just tap out for another copy of Rabble Rousing. So Stimulus Package converting treasures into 1-1 one, one tokens at instant speed. Gala Greeters can make one treasure, two life and a plus one counter each turn. So very good combo and Valet up to 16 power already, about to be 32. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has a lot of creature interaction, so I guess we'll try it. Ledger Shredder plays well with our Conductor. Up against a Junt deck of sorts. Might have to consider to hit our third land drop. And I'll keep a snow land. Play Shredder and pass. And then we can probably get rid of additional lands now with our connive. Pack leader, so Jund Werewolves. 
And now they're Lynchers Shredders, so now I'm kind of liking Shredder plus one mana interaction. And between Witness Protection and Fading Hope, kind of like Witness Protection as an answer to Pack Leader. And then keep the instance for later. Uh huh, time your safekeeping. We'll keep the Pack Leader safe. Let's start with a land. And then now. We might be okay getting rid of another Witness Protection. Although Fading Hopes also may be fine. And hit for two. Hope there's no Hasty Werewolf. Tovalar would also be bad, because then they can hit us and draw a card right away. Would love to get this Clever Conductor down, maybe alongside another one mana spell to trigger Knife. Alright, Stormseeker can attack and they'll draw a card from Pack Tactics. But then we still maybe have the interaction for next turn. And yeah, land is perfect. So play Clever Conductor. And then probably find discarding a land to that ability. And then protection on either Pack Leader or Stormseeker. Let's go with a Stormseeker now, because I want to main phase a spell for Connive. And then probably hang on to Double Fading Hope as additional creature interaction. Spell Pierce probably not going to be great. Back for five. We've got a three-powered creature that could trade off here. And then Double Fading Hope. Great leftovers. Ooh, Sarulf. Triggers Launcher Shredder. And see, I think I'm still happy with Double Fading Hope. Although, we're most likely going to get all those cards back once Conductor dies. So Sarulf will uh, potentially trigger in their upkeep to destroy the board. I'll trade. As we can just bounce our wolf. Get a full grip. And that's the Shredder plus Conductor Synergy. That's so nice. So we can main phase Fairy Vandal. Bounce our wolf. Trigger Knife. And still probably okay ditching a Spell Pierce to get an extra counter. But yeah, our opponent's just too far behind here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Ascendant Spirits turn to maybe Fairy Vandal. Lots of cheap interaction. Opponent also on a blue deck. Who Ledger Shredder 2 now. Kind of lacking a Ledger Shredder so we can keep up the instant speed Vandal later. So we don't really need any more creatures, assuming the survive. Although black mana... Does not bode well for Lancer Shredder. Alright, Cacophony, put on to Mill deck instead. The bad news is that our curve is incredibly low, so Hideous Laughter is gonna be very effective. So I could consider to hit my land drop, or we can pass with Spell Pierce, Fairy Vandal available. And then if they do, let's say, Hideous Laughter, we can still Spell Pierce and then consider we'll trigger Lancer Shredder. Right, opponent's gonna pass. I think I still Fairy Vandal over leveling up Ascendant Spirits to diversify our threats. A Soaring Thought Thief, okay, so more of a rogues deck. Then maybe a fully dedicated mill deck, so maybe Hideous Laughter not gonna be on the menu. Well, in that case, I could consider plus Fading Hope. Let's maybe Fading Hope first to scry into a land. Land is good. And then consider trigger Launcher Shredder. So if they're not going to be a Hideous Laughter deck, maybe I do need Spell Pierce. Or Stowaway is going to be too slow at this point. And then a Clever Conductor seems acceptable. Attack. Got a nice amount of pressure here. Oh, 
replace Thought Thief main phase. And a cacophony we can spell pierce. Shredder triggers first. Maybe discard Fairy Vandal at this point. Okay, another Fading Hope's not bad. So we could Fading Hope, Thought Thief, level up Ascendant Spirits. Or we could play Clever Conductor, hope to draw land and still Fading Hope. And that would also grow Fairy Vandal, so that can attack past Thought Thief at the very least. Yeah, that seems fine too, actually. They haven't shown too much removal, so maybe it's okay to discard Slip out the back. And I could still Fading Hope now to get one extra damage in with Ascendant Spirits. Sure. And then Ledger Shredder triggers as well. Get more cards with Clever Conductor. Another Shredder on top. Don't know if that's all that great now. Would rather find more cheap cantrips. So we can double spell more easily, otherwise we're just leveling up Ascendant Spirit. So our opponent's at 4. Even if they have some sort of board wipe, we can probably get some cards back from Clever Conductor. Shadow's Verdict would be the absolute worst case scenario here. Because that exiles Clever Conductor, so we wouldn't get anything back. But nope, opponent doesn't have it and concedes. So blue-black mill, I guess we can beat. The blue-red version, I think, is a much more difficult matchup if we don't draw the right interaction. As a hideous laughter times two is almost enough to mill us completely. So overall, what do we think of this Mono Blue Ledger Shredder slash Clever Conductor deck? It's pretty sweet once it gets going. Now sadly, the matchup against a red-white burn deck is pretty bad. The mix of efficient threats out of their deck and cheap removal spells makes it very difficult for our deck to ever get a foothold in the game. And the red-white burn deck also happens to be one of the most popular decks in Best of One ranked standard. So I would avoid playing the Mono Blue deck in ranked because of that, but otherwise it seems like a totally reasonable deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.